So it's pretty simple with the markets of where you got to look to understand has this week been bullish or bearish. And we got to talk about a couple things, ladies and gentlemen, today, because everyone's kind of talking about Tesla earnings, how it's a wonderful thing, how the market's doing great, how this is just a dip buying opportunity. And the significant question that you need to ask yourself is, is all the hype actually just really hype? Is the market actually going to make new all time highs? Or is everyone full of crap, right? We're going to be answering this question today, just looking at the week in deep dive levels that we went over in the last week in deep dive. We're going to be coming out with that every single week. So make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel so you know when that comes out with bell notifications because a lot of you don't have bell notifications on. So if you are subscribed to the channel, make sure you have those bell notifications on. We give out the levels and you would have known exactly the trade plan for this week and profited off of massively. Uh, we did say Tesla was going to be a chop fest for earnings just because they were split. However, it is another point of analysts being wrong and how you can't necessarily rely on them because Tesla just blew it out of the water. Going back to recent highs of almost 260, post market 252, kind of retracing a little bit. And again, I like to remind you that everyone was saying 8 to 14. They were expecting downside potential. Uh, it wasn't looking too good going into their earnings, especially because we had basically three lower levels, right? So for them to have this blowout earnings, they really came out and blew everything out of the water. But the market itself wasn't necessarily happy with all of this. The market was like, eh, I really don't know where I want to go. And simply put, it, you're going into a position for the week and week over week, we give out these levels and they're very, very crucial for you guys because they simply tell you one simple story. They don't need fancy indicators, right? Like if I, we, this is the indicators I use to trade. You don't need all of this to know if the market's gonna be bullish or bearish. You, the S&P right now, the indicators is telling me that it's gonna be bearish. We have opportunity to close up or down. Again, well, you guys are gonna be seeing this video is gonna be out on Friday. So it's gonna be about an hour or two before market close. So you already know that there's a possibility for the market to rebound. If you guys tuned into the live stream last night, thank you so much for that. It was a fantastic stream with you all. But again, we talked about this on the live stream, but this is looking like it has the potential to bounce back. We kind of talked about Tesla. We talked about various different things, but everything is not well, right? Let's. I'm going to go through a couple examples in the next three minutes. And guys, make sure you pay attention to this because it could really save you a lot of headache. So number one, the HSI China isn't doing too well. They consistently have red days or below their 200 day moving average, right? This was just pure stimulus where, hey, oh, free money, free money, free money. And then the second the free money dries up, it went all to hell in a handbasket where we're not gonna give you free more money. So the market's like, ah, I'm done playing with this toy. And subsequently, they're not doing too well. We also have the Nikkei that's just been a chop fest recently, right? So the Nikkei, again, came, everyone was like fantastic with Japan. Then they started to raise rates. They've also said that they're going to raise rates in the future. So Japan's no longer going to be this like free money society. It's actually going to cost you to get money. And subsequently, do that has blown the dollar yen trade up. We've covered that in the previous videos, which for all those that don't know what that is, I basically borrow in the yen because it's very very cheap i then sell that in dollars but the problem is i'm playing the spread right here if this side of the equation goes up and this side of the equation goes down i'm losing a ton of money and also because it's a currency trade i can leverage this to 100 to 1 right so for every dollar i get 100 dollars in leverage so people have blown these trades up into absolute crazy proportions so a simple shift does a lot of damage as case in point by this. Now, if you say, okay, dollar yen, that's not gonna affect the economy. It's not gonna affect everything. It's not gonna affect uh, what the perception of the market is. The market, as we talked in the live stream last night, is pricing in a Trump victory because of how all the betting odds and everything. Now, taking politics out of everything, right? Because it doesn't matter who's in the White House. It doesn't matter what the Fed does. It only matters what the charts do. Simply put it, S&P right now, we talked about on the last week in deep dive that the only team that is left to take money from is the bulls, right? They're more exposed than the bears. And subsequently, look what happens. We keep going down. We make five subsequent selling days, right? One, two, three, four, five, right? And then let's see what happens tonight on close, right? If we're going to close above 580.33, then I would say, okay, there's some thesis that we can have a bullish expansion next week that this was a standard pullback but if you close below 578.54 i'm not going to give you that uh, assumption right it's going to be slaughter and also the nasdaq isn't looking too hot either the nasdaq 
Again, below the nine day, not able to get above it, not be able to get above the 494 rotation. We're simply looking at, okay, more bearish news ahead for the NASDAQ. And it's very, very easy, especially with tomorrow, to have bearish news. If we jump over to the calendar real quick, we can see that it is just a crapshoot with everything and we just filter for the US. You guys can do this on investing.com. I highly recommend that you check their calendar out. But you see for this week, it's gonna basically be only durable good orders and expectations of inflation. So the market's gonna be left to its own devices. We're gonna have Atlanta Fed GDP now, which is gonna kind of show us, is the economy still growing? As we would say, again, net speculative positions and then something on Saturday. But the bulk of it, the, everyone's going to be left to their own devices. And as we saw today, new home sales coming in okay. Uh, initial jobless claims continuing to tick up. Building permits coming in shrinking again. So the economy in the housing market is not really, really strong. We also discussed this on the live stream that the mortgage rates, that, which are directly correlated to the 10-year yield, are going up. The 10-year is basically like inflation conquered. Uh, no, I didn't get that memo, guys. Uh, that's completely crap. When the Fed cut rates, what the yield has done for, you know what? Please tell me how the Fed controls interest rates. I really, really, really love to hear you guys' analysis of that on the comment section below, so make sure you throw it down below. The Fed doesn't control interest rates. The mortgage is the exact same as July. QE, 7% interest rates here to stay, and they're going higher. If the Fed cut by 50 basis points, the thing should have been in the toilet. And we talked about it in the theories in the live stream, which housing is not looking too hot. Also, we got another thing coming out in the news, which is NYCB, again, Pay attention to this one, guys. This is the bank that was one that was theorized to have a lot of insolvency and their earnings are pre-market. So make sure you pay attention to what happened in when I see B, what the reaction is. This video will be coming out at the perfect time for you guys so you know what's going on. Check out and take a look at NYCB, ticker NYCB, and that's New York Community Bank. And again, this is going to be the one that's going to really tell you if everything's fine in the banking sector. Coincidentally, Warren Buffett is selling everything off, heading into Berkshire Hathaway earnings with uh, Bank of America, right? The question is, is he basically getting out of Bank of America? Because this is the same man that said there's another shoe to drop in the banking sector. And I would argue that it's actually not even the banking sector. It's the bond sector because this is showing no liquidity tying up. People aren't willing to pay or basically accept these lower rates on the market. Case and point of evidence, reverse repo hitting a new low. The Fed's piggy bank going into the election is basically getting drained. And subsequently, when this thing reaches zero, the treasury is going to freak out. Why is this important? If there's no liquidity in the bonds uh, sector and no one's willing to fund the government's crazy, insatiable appetite for debt, then subsequently, we could line up with a default that is not the choice of politicians. Obviously, they'll act in order to prevent that by hyperinflating the economy, but everyone will basically run away from asset classes because everyone's going to have no confidence in the economy. The rating system for the economy, for the bonds, for the debt is going to go completely the way of the dinosaur. And we really will get into an inflationary debt spiral that we can't recover from. So make sure you guys pay attention to this. Obviously, would have posted this on X. So make sure you guys follow us at fatalinvesting.com. And again, that's going to be where you have to pay attention to that. Because for all those that bought TLT, wow, you just... You guys love haircuts, right? You just just love them haircuts and you're below the 50, below the 200, and you're just heading lower. I mean, this thing is just going to eat your face off with basically um, stocks that just only go down. Now, if you guys want to see a fun stock, DJT, right? Donald Trump's stock. This thing is just, it's going to be the next GME. I, I truly believe this could be in the next GME on earnings night right because this thing just to remind you when it ipo'd it went to 173 dollars do you not suspect the hype if trump wins this thing just going absolutely ballistic not financial advice i will be live streaming we will be live streaming on election night i most likely will buy a couple shares the night before the election just to play a yolo bet because honestly if this thing goes from 40 to 200 honestly Buying a couple shares would just be a fun wager, right? Just just for the hell of it, right? Just yellow, right? But again, 
you got stocks like if you really want to play something like for example rumble uh, not doing too hot right now but it will have a sympathy play with that election night so make sure you guys keep an eye another option you can play out there subsequently for all those with bitcoin looks like you're actually doing something right now so bitcoin the risk on classic asset class is doing something be cautious with it once it gets above 72 that's when i would say true bullishness is established on bitcoin but again we'll keep you guys updated about bitcoin if you guys want to check out our latest video that we did on mcdonald's check it out over here or tesla as well we covered that as well so make sure you guys check out those earnings video over here as well thank you all so much for watching and i hope to see you in the next one